10 News is brought to you in high definition exclusively by Harper Auto Square. WBIR 10 News starts now. Well, everyone is very sad and very concerned. And uh, I guess we're all feeling kind of helpless. Neighbors say they are shocked after police say it appears a father shot his eight year old son and then himself. First responders rushed to this home in Maryville today. It's on Savannah Village Drive in Blunt County. In a bedroom inside, they found 38 year old James Reagan and his eight year old son Clark. Both were brought to the hospital where they died. Reagan taught first grade at Foothills Elementary. His son attended that school as well, and tonight the district says it is heartbroken. 10 News reporter Cole Sullivan spoke with neighbors who say they are trying to come to terms with what happened on their street. Cole. Robin and John, when the fire trucks pulled up, sirens blaring, late neighbors were concerned. Now that they know what happened, they say they're devastated. The call came in just before 930. And there were just trucks, ambulances, and fire trucks, and police cars. And there was obviously uh, a tragedy going on. Jolly Shelton came outside to see what was going on two doors down. Neighbors were all very, very concerned. A home inspector scheduled to survey the house saw a fire. When first responders arrived and went inside, they smelled gasoline and found eight-year-old Clark Reagan and his father Jimmy on the bed. Police say it appears Jimmy shot his son and then himself. Both were brought to hospitals, but both died. The poor mother and for their family, uh, what, a, what a tragic, tragic loss. Clark was a student at Foothills Elementary, where his dad taught first grade. The school district says words cannot express our overwhelming sense of devastation and grief. It's holding a counseling session for parents and students on Tuesday. And on this block of Savannah Village Drive, some neighbors answer the door in tears. Everyone makes an effort to reach out to other people. I've ne I have never lived in a neighborhood quite like this before. A neighborhood now coming to terms with the tragedy next door. I guess we're all feeling kind of helpless. What can we do? You know, if, if only we could have done something before, but... Uh, it's it's people are just stunned. Again, Maryville City Schools says it will gather the staff of Foothills Elementary tomorrow and then offer counseling sessions for students and parents. Those are from nine to noon at the Montgomery Ridge Intermediate School next door. Robin and John. Cole, thank you. New data tonight reveals the number of hate crimes reported in Tennessee in 2018. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation says overall the crimes have increased by 1%. Last year there were 560 hate crimes reported. Of those, 196 reported a known bias in the offense. Crimes against persons made up more than 75% of those cases, while crimes against property made up almost 25%. Assault offenses were the most frequently reported. The TBI also released new data on officer killed or assaulted in 2018. More than 2,300 officers were assaulted or killed across the state. That is up more than 27% from 2015 to 2018. Of those cases, more than 84% were cleared by arrest. The Knoxville Police Department says it confiscated more than 300 pounds of cocaine from a West Knoxville business. That is more than $4 million of the drug. KPD says the business called officers after a suspicious package arrived last week. Officers say they are still investigating where the drugs came from. We're going to move to the forecast and Chief Meteorologist Todd Howell joining us tonight with more on some cooler temperatures to come, Todd. Absolutely, John and Robin. Let's take a look at it. Get right to it for you. Here's your Tuesday morning forecast. Oh, mostly clear, a nice cooler start in the morning, 59 degrees at 6 a.m. And indeed a nice start. Sunshine at 8 a.m., 61 degrees. Some clouds still hanging around the mountains and then clearing there as well during the day. Mostly sunny, 10 a.m. and 68 degrees. Matter of fact, a cooler, drier day tomorrow with lower humidity. So it's all good for your Tuesday. We're still looking at some spotty showers toward the mountains and foothills, but most of us, how about those breezy winds this evening? 
Yeah, really bring it in some of that cooler, but also drier air as we're starting to see the gradual clearing process. Again, I mentioned the mountains and the foothills still looking at some spotty showers taking you down into Monroe County, east of Teleco Plains in the Cherokee National Forest, some spotty showers and up into the Smokies, Gatlinburg, Pittman Center, really up around Clingman's Dome, Mount Lecon, a few leftover showers there. Otherwise, those are drifting to the south, improving conditions again as we get into your Tuesday. Really nice weather tomorrow. Next chance for thunder showers comes late Wednesday. We'll talk about that in your full forecast and we'll look ahead to Father's Day weekend as well. John Rock. All right, Todd, thank you. The water that flooded parts of Campbell County is gone, leaving behind mud, trees and buildings that are destroyed. Several buildings in La Follette were condemned and deemed unsafe for people to go inside. Water was more than eight feet deep inside the church Faithway Assembly of God. Leaders there say they're going to have to tear that building down to rebuild. It's a disaster completely and totally. Sad is the best description. Still unsure just how much money that will cost to tear it down and build it again. Traffic is moving once again after a rock slide closed I-40 westbound just across the state line into North Carolina. Happened at exit 7 Cold Springs Creek Road. Drivers were stuck in traffic for up to four hours. 10 News reporter Shannon Smith spoke to travelers who say they are happy to finally make it back home. Shannon. Robin, on a normal day, 26,000 cars pass by this section of Interstate 40, so it's a big deal when it gets shut down. And today, a lot of East Tennessee people were directly affected by it. Dorothy Garrett and her husband stopped at a rest stop off westbound I-40 in North Carolina this afternoon. We had to stop at a lot of welcome centers and uh, stretch our legs. They ended up resting a lot longer than planned. Pulled out on the highway and was stuck in traffic from... from about four hours from quarter to two to six o'clock. It wasn't till a couple hours in that they learned why they were stuck. We thought maybe it was a real bad car accident ahead of us because it's raining and some traffic. Instead, it was a rock slide near the Tennessee, North Carolina border, not far from the slide that happened earlier this year that shut down the interstate in both directions. Then we seen the big heavy equipment go and I said, well, they're going to fix something. The Garretts sat with hundreds of other cars, unmoving on the busy highway, feeling lucky that they were in walking distance of a rest stop bathroom. Oh, I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know what we were going to do. We had uh, some peanut butter crackers and a bottle of water. <laughs> Garrett said the people stuck with them tried to make the most of the traffic jam. They are throwing ball and kids were and, and people borrowing umbrellas and walking around to take care of one another. And when one lane finally reopened. Oh, so pleased, tickled to death. <laughs> the Garrett's got home to Maryville much later than planned. They're worn out, but say they're glad no one was hurt. You could expect anything when you're traveling. Anything could happen. NCDOT says one lane of I-40 West will remain closed overnight as they clean up the rest of the rock slide. As of now, the expected time for the road to be reopened is around 8 o'clock in the morning, but that of course could change. John. All right, Shannon, thanks. We're glad they're home safe tonight. A Chattanooga mother is warning others after she found parasites in her son's eyes. Melissa Brown says it started after her son went swimming in Harrison Bay State Park. She says hours later, he started complaining about pain in his eyes. She took him to the hospital after noticing black dots. Eventually, those small bugs slid out of his eyes. They sent her son home with antibiotic eye drops, but they never learned what kind of parasites were in his eyes. Wasn't even thinking about, I guess, them sending them off, what they were supposed to do with them, test them, how all that was supposed to work, until I saw her them throw them in the garbage, wad up the paper and throw them in the garbage. The health department says hospitals aren't required to report parasite cases unless they involve a parasite called crypto. It's not clear just what type of parasite, again, Cole picked up. Voting registration fees will soon be going up in Tennessee. The increase will take effect on July 1st, pending approval by the state government operations committee. Any boat operated by gas engine, electric motor, or sail is required to be registered. Boaters can register their vessels for one, two, or three years. Owners will not see the increase until their current registration expires. You can find the new fees on our website, WBIR.com. And if you're looking for something to keep the kids entertained this week, why not take them fishing for free? It's free fishing week in Tennessee for kids 15 and younger. 
The Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency says they can fish for free through June 14th. An East Tennessee site is now on the National Register of Historic Places. The Tennessee Military Institute Residential District in Monroe County was one of eight Tennessee properties added to the list by the U.S. Department of the Interior. The three houses next to the historic military school were built in 1905, housed school leaders and teachers. The Military Institute closed in 1975 and the school campus has been vacant since 2007. Ringing bells are a familiar sound for Casey Benson. They mark when a patient's cancer treatment is over. She became a care coordinator at ProVision Proton Therapy after beating cancer six years ago. But in 2018, she was diagnosed with breast cancer once again. Casey says she found comfort knowing her co-workers could help her. I knew that my life was going to be saved by these people and I was good with that. I just feel like I'm, I'm never going to see this again and I'm going to give Proton a lot of the credit for that. Benson's treatment ended the first week of June. She was able to ring the victory bell on June 7th. It is, of course is the 10th of the month, which means it's time for a Buddy Check 10 program. Call up your buddy. Remind her to do a breast self-exam and then do one yourself.